I was the first to arrive in a car from my era, the superb Jensen Healy. This is a beauty. Built by Jensen, designed by the father and son team that uh, brought us the Healy 3 litre, styled by the same man who did the Aston Martin Lagonda and powered by a twin cam Lotus engine. You really can think of this then as being like one of those old 70s supergroups, Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young. Will Young, but... Oh, there you go. Here we go, speak of the devil. James, that is magnificent. A TVRS from your period. It is. It's TVRS2, actually. S2. Yeah, 170 horsepower Cologne Ford V6 from the Granada. Absolutely. No, this was superb. And the other thing as well about these, can you open the boot? Yes. <clears throat> yes, I can. Because you know on the Antiques Roadshow? Yes. They always look behind the clock face and they can tell who made it. From oh, the maker's mark. mark. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, normally on a TVR, if you look underneath the carpets or the roof lining or something like that, mm. you often find a clue as to who built the car. You got something? Yes. Oh. There you go. This was made by a man called... Nobby? Nobby, I think. Yes, yeah. Nobby. Now, you just don't get that on a... On a Golf, say. Or a Ferrari. No, no, you just don't... As we admired our wonderful cars, <laughs> Richard arrived in a little gem from his youth, a Lotus in Lamb. Oh, yes! Oh, ho, ho. It's come oh, back! Yeah. It's come home! Yep, it has. Isn't this? It's a, it's a poetic moment, actually. The last Elan here back at Lotus. That's terrific. Oh, it's magnificent. That? It is. I remember when this came out. That square stance it had. Nobody built a square car before. No, no nobody had done that. It was, yeah, there were, there were reasons for that. Apparently, that the, uh, the plastic used to shrink and they didn't know that the suppliers had come with a new plastic that didn't shrink. So it was wider than was expected. Wide, okay, but, but, hey, but this is ingenuity, making the best of it. I mean, it was the same, the TVR, plastic. No, clearly, plastic, there's something... Plastic. Plastic body, it just sounds And right. the engine in this wasn't Lotus, was it? No, no it's, it's Isuzu, but that's Japanese reliable. When they tested one of these, they ran it around a racetrack for 24 hours straight. Yeah. For 22 of those hours, it didn't break down. Seriously? As we chatted, a challenge arrived. Uh, you read it, Hammond. Uh, uh, you will now race around the Lotus test track to see which of your ridiculous cars is best. Ridiculous? It doesn't say ridiculous. It actually on. says ridiculous. It goes on. And then you must put the Stig in a car that wiped your British sports cars off the map. A Peugeot 205 GTI and set a time. <laughs> what, it seriously thinks a, a crummy little French hatchback can yeah. beat these purpose-built cars? Have we got to get the Peugeot? It says we've got to put them in it, yes. First, though, we did some laps in our classic British sports cars. Oh, this is a stirring scene. Three great British sports cars herring across the British landscape. <laughs> I love the sound of a twin cam. It's engine noise you're hearing, not tricked up. That, that's not... Oh, dear. Oh, dearie me. There we go! Yes, I knew there'd be one there if I looked hard enough. This car is, of course, very light. Weighs just 987 kilograms because it's made from canoe building materials. Sorry, scrap that, because it's made from composites. Critically, the land is front-wheel drive, because it's just better. At the same time this car was coming out, Mazda were bringing out the MX-5 rear-wheel drive, old-fashioned. And as a result, the MX-5 never really caught on. And it sold in massive numbers for decades. But it, it didn't have the same exclusivity that the Elan did, which never sold in the same vulgar, brash numbers. Sometimes with this engine, you do notice that the oil pressure could drop alarmingly in a fast corner. It's OK, the engine would never blow up, because normally the water pump would go first. A very useful feature, that. And when you press the throttle in the TVR, there is a slight delay before anything happens. A lot of people thought this was a fault, but actually, it's a very innovative safety feature. I'll demonstrate. You're driving along, you press the throttle, and the car says, are you sure? Oh, all right, then. Look at that TVR in my mirror. And that gents corner is so flat. A little bit of history. 
history for you. After the uh, Second World War, which we won, uh, Britain was littered with disused airfields, and many of them, like this one in fact, were converted into racetracks. And it was on these twisting, turning racetracks that the lightweight, nimble British sports car was sort of developed and honed. <laughs> we could have gone round all day, but the producer said we must pull in and post our lap times. The time has come, Hammond, would you reveal? Your fastest lap. My fastest lap in my Lotus Elan was two minutes and nine seconds. Two minutes nine seconds. Blistering. That, that is. There's no other word. It is. There is no other word. Blistering. It James. felt right here. TVRS two. My fastest lap time was two fifteen point nine. Well, two fifteen point nine. Again. And here, the 1970s, Jensen Healy. To 17.9. So what we can see here is progress. Well, no. as you'd expect from the British sports car yeah. industry, that's very good. Mm -hmm. That's even better. Yeah. That's even the cars have come on decade Absolutely. by decade. And now it's time to find out how fast the stick can go around in this Peugeot 205 GTI. Doesn't look like a GTI. No, no, I couldn't get a GTI, so I've got a diesel. Um, they're basically the same. Yeah, same thing, pretty much. Yeah, okay, yeah. Stig, start it up. <laughs> The Stig wound up the Peugeot and began his flying lap. Here we go, and... Timing. Go! OK, we're off. I think the reason I couldn't get a GT on, I suspect, is because they've all rusted away, or been crashed, or fallen to pieces. Well, the handling was terrible on there, oh. so they were crashed a lot. Oh. Any faults with your car? Any faults with yours? No, and did you know, in the whole history of TVR, there is no recorded incident of one ever breaking down? I've heard that. And here he comes. Yes. 209, 215, 217 for us. <laughs> <laughs> 222.0. Point, I think. I don't think we need to go on.